Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KitBadger.com out here with my competition loadout from the 2023 Midnight Brutality match. If you're unfamiliar with Midnight Brutality, it is one of the brutality matches put on between InRange TV and Forgotten Weapons. Really fun competitions, usually some sort of kind of theme as far as breaking down divisions and overall a good time. So this was held at, I want to say Echo Valley Training Center right on the border of West Virginia and Virginia, beginning of March, 2023. It was probably gonna be cold, maybe wet too. So limitations with respect to flying with gear and stuff too, in part, because I was camping, more on that later. But with that, as far as footwear, I ended up bringing this. I've reviewed these before. These are my Solomon Forces. They're actually Gore-Tex and they did a good job for me. One, they have their speed laces, easy on, easy off. But yeah, having one pair of shoes while I actually really like my Solomon Tundra boots, as far as warmth, as well as being waterproof, I didn't want to wear them around and I didn't want to bear or bring a second pair of shoes. So brought these, they did good across the board to include just traveling, kept my feet dry, which it was money. And I hate being cold. So I was also camping, so there was camping gear involved. Fortunately, I was staying with a buddy. He was going to bring a tent, still needed sleeping pads, sleeping bag, stove, pot, stuff along those lines. And then in addition to that, camera stuff. So there was definitely a limitation with respect to what I could bring gear wise. And I did not want to be cold. So I ended up bringing this. Well, I have two sets of level seven, like high loft insulation stuff. This one right here is from Beyond Clothing. Here's the pants, they zip off, which is really handy. And here's the jacket. These, I would say, probably are not quite as warm as my Wild Things ones, but these are also a lot more compressible than the Wild Things Level 7. So I ended up bringing these largely in part because space. Things that are nice, though, is these pants zip off, essentially, and so walking up this hill between stages you'd get pretty hot and you could essentially unzip kind of the whole side and basically mechanically vent which was really nice but those were definitely clutch definitely kept me warm through that competition also gloves in part just contact gloves you're out there at one point it started snowing a little bit so that'll give you the idea of kind of temperature range there and yeah, grabbing cold metal, not super fun. So I was wearing these gloves by Magpul. I wanna say they're like something or other contact gloves, but they did a good job for me. Not super warm, but I was wearing that stuff and I had these on. And then I had some just kind of chemical hand warmers in my pockets. So in between stages, I would just hold them with these gloves. It was nice. So while that was the high loft stuff, Pretty much wore this every night too. This is this jacket here from Beyond. Pretty nice, it's their Stretch Alpha, I wanna say, hooded jacket. And like I said, I wore it the whole time. And then as far as base layers, one night I think I just wore a t-shirt, the other night I wore this Merino long sleeve by First Spear. And then pants, I was probably wearing these as well as I think these by Prometheus Design Works. In part, just because of the like pocket layout, it works for my life. And good socks. These are like over the calf socks, fits. I wanna say they're ski socks, but definitely were nice and cozy. And last but not least, was wearing this beanie right here by Wild Things. Pretty much wore it all night, except when I was wearing my helmet and as soon as my helmet would come off, this would go back on. And then it was also nice to, when we were like hiking up, be able to pull this thing off to kind of help mechanically vent as far as yeah, maintaining body temperature. Midnight Brutality, as you might imagine, it's a night match. So a number of different divisions to include the two that I shot in, one of which was Light Fighter, meaning you're basically using a weapon amount of light, like visible light. And then I also shot an infantry where you're using night vision as well as IR laser, IR illumination. So to that end, obviously 
wasn't running anything other than white light for that light fighter division. But when I was shooting in infantry, I needed knots. So I ended up carrying this. This was my small personal item when I was flying in addition to a backpack because one, I didn't have a hard sided case. And well, yes, this is padded. It's not padded to the point where I would trust luggage handlers with it. And yeah, certain things should not get beat up. So inside there, I had this guy right here, which is my Ops Core. I believe it's the Sentry XP helmet and then Ops Core Amp Ear Pro. And over here, this Streamlight Sidewinder. And this, of course, I need a nod. So inside this, this I reviewed this before. It is basically a helmet bag by Adi, Ate, Ot Gear, whatever it is. And in the back here, there's actually this compartment padded additionally for your night vision. So I have these guys right here, Wilcox G24 mount and DTNVS. DTNVS? Yes, DTNVS. These from Lacentia Arms. Pretty amazing. L3 Gen 3 tubes, white foss, and these pieces on here. These are little mission recorders from Unobtainium gear. And yeah, I was basically running this setup right here for the infantry portion, which I actually shot on night two. Everything honestly did pretty good. I These nods are amazing. I like being able to record footage. I've reviewed these before. The same shortcoming they've had in the past, they, surprise, still have, which is, and it was actually honestly more notable in this competition, in that one, they film in 1080, which I'd rather in 4K. But the bigger issue is, especially in the competition environment, boom, hit your illumination and laser, which I'll show you what I was using later in a second. And like, bam, you have all the illumination. But the camera inside here basically takes a while, like the ISO. So it's like, oh, what do we do with all this light? And be like, all right, cool, like, let's dim it down. And by the time it kind of normalizes and dims down to where you have like a good picture, I'm done shooting, doing the shooting I needed to do there. I let off the pressure pad and it goes back to whatever the ambient is through these. And so, yeah. They did not perform the way I would have liked to, especially in that competition environment, but it was hands-free recording, so I'm grateful for that. Um, yeah, these things, the tubes and everything, did an amazing job. Also, just DTNVSs, they're lightweight, which is nice when you're wearing them a lot. And yeah, I liked them. As far as this helmet setup, the other thing that I actually don't have on here now, I took it off, the Unity Tactical Spark. Had one on here and then when I was shooting in the light fighter, I actually had two different ones, one on my chest, one on the back of my rig, uh, red and blue respectively, and then a red one on here. I took them off, gave them to my buddy who I was camping with because they're handy and I have some more. I just haven't replaced them yet. But helmet, comfortable, Opscore amps, really comfortable. This Sidewinder is actually really nice and it's pretty easy to kind of feel, be like, okay, cool, I'm in this setting or this setting. One thing I will say, which was a bummer, is for whatever reason, the IR light died on me. Like it just never turned on, which I've used it in the past, so I don't know, somewhere along the lines, it died. But the red one was pretty clutch, so you don't blast your night vision and still plenty of just illumination for loading magazines and things along those lines. So that is that. Oh, and then needed to carry stuff stage to stage. So the first night I was actually using basically a little kind of like range bag, had ammo, extra mags, water and stuff like that in there. And of course I have my camera stuff. Everything else was more or less on my person, but the first night or before the match started, so everyone didn't have to stay till like four in the morning to do award ceremony and prize table, which they had an amazing prize table. I'll talk to that more in like the video on the actual match, but my name got drawn second because it's random. So I went in there and one, I wasn't gonna do people dirty and take 
one of the amazing prizes, not that this prize wasn't amazing, but super high value prize. I was like, I can actually use that. And I like those guys and I like doing stuff in winter to include winter camo. So I actually got this. This was on the prize table. It is a backpack by Varushtalika from Finland. And here's my patches. I just kind of threw them on there. And so this was actually really handy. I actually used it on night two. Just threw all my stuff in here, extra magazines, ammo, water, and whatever else maybe I was carrying. And then I just slide the leg of my tripod through here and then just hand carry my camera case. But this was handy as well. Which brings us to guns, plural, shooting in two different divisions. I ended up actually flying with this. This is a case reviewed it before by Impact Casing Container, local to me. Pretty cool aluminum cases, hard cases, and they have a locking bar that goes across, which is handy. And uh, all of the rest of the things. So I needed to carry ammo, have access to it. It wasn't like a crazy high round count competition necessarily, like any of the stages, but I needed to have access to ammo. So I ended up actually using this. This is the Spiritus Microfite Mark V chassis, I think, with the pouch up front, and I have the 3 mag 556 insert, and then these expander wings by Lunar Concepts. This one GP pouch had my radio on it, not that I needed it. There's plenty of comps happening. I didn't need to be on them. Uh, antennas in here somewhere had that over there and then the soft t wide tourniquet over there and then this i forget their name for it this harness right here also by lunar concepts pretty nice and comfortable just yeah stays secure spreads the weight out doesn't move and then guns and ammo so you're like ivan how do you decide what guns to shoot at a competition is it the best gun you have or this this here's what it comes down to i'm like what ammo do i have to shoot that's usually the beginning of the matrix and then the second part is what else do i still need to create content on so as far as ammo goes i had actually a bunch of 300 blackout by bernal like 150 grain supersonic so i'm like i should probably shoot a 300 blackout because i have that ammo and I ended up actually, for the light fighter, shooting this right here, which is my mini fix by Q. On it, I have this handguard I got, kind of cool, basically bigger, a little bit longer. So you can use more of the M-lock sections, especially because it's stretched out. Although I will say, depending on how long the screws are, you will run into a can. On here, I have the thunder chicken on here right now by Q and then I was using this light which is the surefire scout light it is their new pro there uses a 18650 rechargeable or I'm sorry not pro what is pro slash turbo I guess and things amazing did an incredible job being able to illuminate at distance and shooting this thing also on here I have a sling contour sling by Lunar Concepts same with one of their hot pockets that right there definitely nice to grab when this gun was the ambient temperature in the 20s and then optics pretty cool setup i will probably finish out some content on this setup but old school basically a three three by 30 um acog with a rmr sitting on top of it and this was a ton of fun to shoot. One, I love shooting the minifix. It's fun. But this optic setup did a really good job. This light will reach out really high candela. So 200 yards. I want to say one of the ranges. It was like a good 200 yards. Boom, hit that. I could see it, get there, and make my hits. And then there were other stages where you're either a lot closer or there was a stage where you're driving, you're shooting out of the back of a vehicle, and rather than a 3X magnifier, just hit that, look through the top with that red dot inside that RMR, and get those hits. This was really cool. 
I will say I ran into issues and I think it was a couple fold. So one, absolutely limited space with respect to just things I could bring. So I'm like, what magazines can I bring that are gonna feed both the guns? And I landed on these because before I left, they seemed to work pretty good for me. And when I got there, I definitely ran into issues. Probably because I never actually jammed all of them to 20 when I was just on the range, but these jammed to 20 with 300 blackout. These are not 300 blackout specific PMAGs. And between 300 blackout and steel case 300 blackout, I would run into feeding issues, which part of it was, as I mentioned, not 300 blackout and steel cased ammo. And then the other part was basically the magwell here. And I love this gun. It's a ton of fun to shoot. But if you're using something largely bigger than like 10 round magazines, what can happen, especially, I probably use this gun well outside of its kind of use case. Like largely it's a hunting gun. And if you're just running the bolt and hunting, taking one or maybe two shots, it's great. Or even at the range, like just shooting but running around, slamming this thing down on the ground, shooting off the magazine, doing all kinds of things. What can end up happening, especially when you're not using 10 round magazines, I actually was using a 30 round magazine for a little bit that I'd borrowed for one of the match or one of the, one of the courses of fire, one of them stages, there you go. What can happen is this has the ability to move a little bit, which if you have a longer like magwell, Largely that's limited. And so what would happen is running around, smashing into stuff, this would sometimes get pushed back. So when I would go to run the bolt, it would run into basically the feed lips of the gun or like it would nosedive. That did not work out well. So I would sometimes have to run the bolt back, press that forward, run it forward, it would strip the round. And then all of this with steel cased ammo, which did not help things as far as just, yeah, steel on steel, like the bottom rounds and stuff, it does not move very well compared to brass. So it happened. I, when I give you the rundown of the actual match breakdown and stuff, I'll tell you places and everything like that, but I mean, I made this thing work and even with malfunctions, I actually did pretty good. But I did best shooting an infantry, which I'll show you that gun. Oh yeah, and during the light fighter, since I was not wearing a helmet, because I was using white light, obviously didn't need the helmet and that ear pro attached to it. So I was actually running these right here, which is the auto noise barrier. Basically they're amplified in-ear hearing protection. They did great. Good job, comfortable for me. Could still hear all the range briefs and everything like that without having to take ear pro in and out. So that was handy. But the infantry division. So in infantry, you can use basically IR illumination as well as IR lasers and optics and night vision. So I was shooting this right here, which is my Sons Liberty Gunworks. It is their 11 and a half inch. Down here on the end, I have the Sierra 5 by Dead Air, 556 can. Thing did awesome. I def, like, I hate not shooting suppressed. Quick note on that, even shooting those, I think 150 grain Bernal 300 blackout supersonic with that mini fix. I had to reshoot a stage because it was too quiet, like pro timer wouldn't pick it up, but it happened. So with this, Pro timer did pick it up, 556 is still loud, plus you have action noise, but this was really nice. Didn't have a bunch of flash or anything like that. And I was running this right here, Hollow Sun LE221, I wanna say. I forget the nomenclature. Basically, it is a titanium body. Use this CR123, and it has visible green, as well as IR lasers, and they're mounted right here, pretty much above the bore, pretty close to center, which is actually really nice and handy. And then of course you can put whatever switch. And so I was using that for my laser pointer 
And then over here, I have a Kiji on top of a Surefire Scout body. And with that, one of their tail caps where I can actually, for whatever reason, the switch goes down, I can click it here. Or if I need to just constant on, I can click that. And then this switch by Modlite, it is their dueling mod button. And then some arson manufacturing, basically wire management, kept everything really nice and clean in there. And this setup was awesome. I ended up setting my key G to high. This one right here is the 1040. And so I actually used the diffuser for a little bit on 40. And then I got to another stage, flipped it off, and it wanted to try and come all the way off. So I took it all the way off. It's held on by like kind of this band. I've actually lost one of the bands before, so I don't know if that is the best way to do that diffuser, but I didn't want to lose it. So I took the whole thing off. I actually have it stowed in a piece of gear, but the Kiji does an amazing job. This thing on high illuminated everything for me. And then kind of moving back, prototype uh, vertical foregrip by Die Free Company, formerly Rev. And then coming back, wanting to get my optic up, is using this right here. I think this is the Kick 01 by Scalarworks. It's basically a riser that dimensionally, it's pretty handy. You can actually run the Scalarworks like a 157, one of their red dots, as well as their magnifier mount. And it just brings everything up, fits on one riser. But had this on there, Holosun Ames, AEMS, I think it is. Used it a tiny bit. Largely, I was just using laser and illuminator. There was one of the stages where I definitely found myself actually behind the gun and everything brought it up to a height where it was actually comfortable to be behind it with night vision. And then, yeah, the stoner rifle grip, again, kind of a collaboration with those guys. And this sling right here, which is the, I want to say Street Fighter sling by Viking Tactics. And how did all this do? Well, I made it do pretty good. I actually won my division, which was pretty cool. Came in, I think, second overall, which could have been first, but I actually screwed something up, which is pretty funny. Um, no, this gun actually did a really good job for me. I was shooting some Bernal 55 grain, and I did run into something weird that I hadn't ran into before. And what it was is I would go to do a mag change and this would be locked back on empty mag, pull that out, throw a new mag in, hit the bolt release, and it'd be like, boop, and then stop. And I think it probably had to do with, again, steel cased ammo, just a lot of friction because I don't remember actually ever running into those issues before. So the solution was it would stop right there. And so I would just pull it until it bottomed out and send it and it would go into battery. But for whatever reason, when it was locked back on that empty magazine, there just wasn't enough spring tension to override that friction with that steel cased ammo, I guess. But this thing, this gun's a ton of fun to shoot and it did a really good job between both this illuminator and laser regardless of the stage hit it the only thing i ran into which no fault of any of this stuff was the targets never got painted so depending on where the target was distance and background myself like everyone else there as soon as you hit that and you illuminate it you kind of wash out any contrast you have which it happened but wasn't any fault of this. This was plenty powerful to whether it's the 200 yard shots or stuff closer. Yeah, really pleased with this setup. Tons of fun to shoot. Coming away from it, how did everything do? What would I have changed, if anything? Well, I had a blast shooting all of this. I really like shooting the mini fix. It's a ton of fun. Like I said, I did run into that issue. I actually called, talked to one of the engineers, found kind of a workaround for using like longer magazines. So I'll probably try that, give that a go. Probably wouldn't have used that steel case because both guns ran into issues just with friction really. But 
as far as optics, lights, illuminators, lasers, all that stuff, stuff did a rad job. And the rest of my gear supported it really well. It was definitely warm and comfortable, which I'm pretty sure some people froze. So yeah, it's pretty much a win across the board aside from yeah, just running into those couple of issues that I did run into. But I had a blast out there, great group of people. And yeah, you can check back one, there'll be links to all the stuff down below and check out my review of the actual course or competition if you'd like. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbatch.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.